Let's talk compressors. There are many types of air compressors. Bi air 12 volt compressors, air zenith air compressors, compressor called an Oasis compressor. Then you have what's called EDC or engine driven compressors. We're gonna go over all of them. Briefly, we're gonna go over the others. Today, mainly, we're gonna talk about bi airs. Let's start with your engine driven compressors. You have the Yark 210 style, like this, and you have the Sand In style that is like this. Your engine driven compressors are what are found on uh, freight liners. It doesn't need an oiler or anything like that. A York compressor has pistons that go up, up and down. Um, it's pretty simple to set up. Little Shop Manufacturer sells a full kit for NBS's, OBS's, Ford's, just about anything out there. It's a bracket kit. You also get the compressor from them. If you order from them, spend the extra money and get what they call the Slim Compressor. It has an oil, an oil mod already in the head. It's a great compressor. They are 12 1400 roughly for the kit. If you're switch happy and you want to hit switches constantly and you like playing with them, Go engine driven. It's it's one of the best ways to go as far as onboard. You can have two 10 gallon tanks on your truck with a York and literally as you're playing with the switches, you can watch it fill back up to 200 PSI. It takes no time to fill them up. Another way you can go is the sand in, which is basically like, it's like an AC compressor that you see on your truck. It actually has multiple pistons and they go in and out by rotating. The only ones I recommend are the sand in brand. You can get a sand in, I think it's a 504, 508, 709, something like that. Um, you can convert them. They'll go bolt into your stock location on most applications. They're great. You have to put an inline oiler on those to keep the head oiled. I'm not going to go over all that. Do some research. You can find it all over the internet of how to convert a sand in compressor to an onboard air compressor. It's really, really easy. Your other compressors, you have what's called an Oasis compressor. It is basically York engine driven compressor with like a winch motor on it it's 12 volt it's power hungry it works great but it's like two grand for this thing so ah, i just go engine driven if you're going to go that route when we get down to these 12 volt compressors like we have on the table we'll show you in a second you have air zenith is a great compressor so i've heard i've never ran an air zenith i can't speak on the air zenith i've never used it read some reviews if you want to go for it, go for it. If you're going to go 12 volt, go with Bayer. Do not, I repeat, do not use Air Max or any other brand of junk ass compressors. They are junk and they will go out on you. Air Max, Vixen, Airbagit.com, junk. Do not buy anything from them. All right, so let's speak on buy air compressors buy air is tried and true they've been working for years they're just like anything if you install them correctly if you run the correct power to them correct size wire they will last forever there are many different sizes they're all the way from buy air i think 80 or 90 all the way up to the new buy air 485 but low, which ones are best for my application? If you've got something, a mini truck or a small car that you're gonna run a three gallon, three gallon tank, you're not gonna play with the switches a lot. One Vi Air 380 or one Vi Air 444 is plenty for you. That's all you need. If you want a lot of air, fast air, high volume, if you wanna hit your switches a lot, or if you have a large truck, say a four door or a dually or something like that where you need big air, then you need bigger compressors. I've talked about it before. I'm gonna talk about it again here because this is a compressor video. The 380, the 444s, the 480. All of those are 50% duty at 200 PSI. 200 PSI is the magical number for air ride for some reason. Don't know why, just has been from the beginning of airbag time. 100% um, duty is for every minute it runs, it needs that same amount of minutes to cool down before it, get, it can be back to 100% optimal efficiency. Once you get past that, if it's 50% duty at 200 PSI, then for every minute you run it, you got to let it cool down for two minutes. Um, plus, you lose your efficiency of your CFM once you get to 50% also. I recommend 485s. The new Vire 485 is 100% duty. At 200 PSI, I can't remember the CFM, but it's way up there. So from my experience, my OBS, I have a five gallon tank. I had three 444s on my five gallon tank. I wound up taking the three 444s and put on two 485s, and it's way more air than I ever need. 
My compressors barely run unless I just drain the heck out of them. I'm not going to sit here and tell you how, oh, well, how long does it take to get from 0 to 200 PSI, da, 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 da. Everybody you hear, oh, I've got two full 44s and it does it in 30 seconds. I've got two full 44s and it takes five minutes. Everybody seems to take differently. Every website you go on talks differently. I can tell you the 485s are going to fill it up the fastest and they're going to turn on less. Run the 485s. But this is a 480 and this is a full 44. Both of these are good compressors. They look old, but they still work. Major differences, you can see with the 485. 480 the head is bigger on the full 44 it's a little smaller the, these bolt holes right here they're all the same so all these compressors from here to here are all the same it's all in the head that that's where your difference is one of the biggest flaws of the by air are these check valves right here these go out constantly just from the moisture especially down here in the south one way to tell if your compressor is working Take the filter off. This is your intake, of course. Put your finger over the hole. If it sucks it in, it's working. If it's not, it's not working. If it's not working, the first place to check is this check valve. Pull your line off, try to blow through it. Then, if you're not, undo your check valve. See if your line's clogged or if it's your check valve. If it is, replace your check valve. If you replace your check valve, do not replace it with a buy air. If you replace your check valve, buy an SMC check valve. They're not much more than these Vi Air ones and they're a lot better. When mounting these, this is okay. This is okay. This is not okay. You will see a hundred people with their compressors like this or like this. No people. Stop. Inside here you have a piston. It's got a plastic ring on it. That that's your piston ring. That's what's keeping that's what's pumping air. If you mount it like this. The weight of that is going to wear out that one side of that piston. Yes, it's an aluminum piston. It's not that heavy, but I'm telling you, need a rebuild on a compressor faster than I will if I've got mine like this, I promise you. If you want to run them like this, run them. I'm just giving you some advice. You're going to wear out your, your uh, piston, or at least the ring, the Teflon ring. Another thing, before we tear this one apart, you see this right here? What this is caused from is poor wiring. You see this right here? You get these by air square relays with the by airs. Throw that shit in the trash. What you want is a pack 80. You can run two compressors off this pack 80. Another thing, biggest problem with people and wiring is they think because their by air comes with this little bitty wire that it's okay to run this size wire, this eight gauge or whatever the hell it is from the back of your truck all the way to your battery. No people, it's not gonna work. If your battery is right here next to this compressor, sure, run this size wire. It's not gonna be a problem. Some people, relocate their batteries to the back, I understand that. And if they're close, run some little wire. You're gonna be running a wire for your battery under your hood all the way to the back of your compressors. You need to put your pack 80 as close to these compressor wires as you can. Do not, I repeat, do not extend these wires on this compressor from by air. This is the recommended link. I would also recommend you make this ground wire as short as possible. All grounds on any kind of electrical system, especially 12 volt, need to be as short as possible. And just running a self-tapping screw into your bed or trunk is not gonna work. It needs to go to the frame. If you wanna run it to the bed or the trunk, run you another strap, a two gauge or one aught strap from your frame to your body. Then ground, I don't care if you've got factory straps, those are, those are, those are insufficient, they're too small. Run you a bigger ground. From your battery to this pack 80, two gauge or bigger. No four gauge, no six gauge, no eight gauge. Kind of like this. You stick your finger in a so light socket. More than likely, you're going to get shot. There may be a chance that you don't, but most of the time, you're going to get shot. Same thing with this. You can run four gauge or six gauge. More than likely, you're going to have this problem. You're going to burnt wires. But if you run two gauge or bigger, you're never going to have to worry about it. So that's a quick wire diagram and my amazing artistic talents. Pack 80, you got two small terminals on this side. One goes to ground, your other one goes to your pressure switch. Then you have your two gauge coming from your battery to one of the bigger terminals, and then the other terminal goes to your two compressors. Two compressors max per pack 80. I've ran three in a spot and it warmed up the pack 80. It never shut down, but it warmed up. So two compressors max people, even the 485s, two compressors is fine. There's other ways that you can wire this up to make your compressors turn on. What I normally like to do is just put this to a ground, this runs to a pressure switch, and then the other side of my pressure switch, instead of running it to a constant wire, I run it to a switch or a toggle switch or my key switch. But that's your typical wire.
I'm gonna quickly show you guys how to take apart a compressor and maybe help you guys rebuild one if you need to. Your head, you have four bolts at the top. Take out the four bolt. You got your compressor head, you got your spacer, and you got that piston. Now if you look on this piston, this is that Teflon ring I was speaking of. Then you've got four bolts that go in right here, four Allens. Once you get them done, you take off your compressor inlet cavity. If you get a compressor rebuild kit, more than likely what you're gonna get is this piston head. It's gonna come with all your O-rings. Just pay attention when you pull it apart where your O-rings are. There's an Allen right here that you can undo and this, this piston comes off and also the piston head. It's pretty easy when you go to rebuild these as far as the head goes. It's literally, you, un you undo what we just did, undo this Allen head, uh, these three screws right here slide this off undo these two allen heads replace the the head replace the the connecting rod bob's your uncle there you go if you have trouble with wiring like this and it burns up your compressor's not junk you can change this piece back here once you get your head off you have two long eight millimeter screws right here or bolts you undo them you got to get you a hammer kind of tap on this see how my fingers are under here these are strong sometimes and if you don't watch out you're gonna you're gonna get a blood blister under it so that's the inside. Got magnets in here. Y'all know how motors work. So usually when it burns up, and this one is burnt up, what you have in here, it's for your ground and your power. And what it is, is it's two spring-loaded magnets. And they ride on this piece here. I don't know what all of this is called. It's part of the motor. But this back piece rides on here, like so. What'll happen is you'll burn those up. I think you can order just this piece. If you have another compressor laying around, you, you can take the piece off. The biggest trick is, in here they're already burned up, so it's kind of hard to show you. There's a magnet, and they have springs behind them. And what they do is they're, they're sprung, so they'll keep tension against here. If you ever have to change this out, what you're gonna have to do is you set it in there, get you a little screwdriver, and once you set it on there, you'll have to take your little screwdriver where your magnet is and just push it over to where you're opening it up, slide it on that shaft. And then once you're on there, boom, slide it all back together and roll. Pay attention to what side was front and back. Watch your fingers, slide it back in there. Now you're gonna have like it just clicked in, you heard it click in, it's got grooves in there. It can only go in one way and it be sealed up. Make sure that your seals are on there good. Bam, put it on there like that. Same thing with this one. It can only go on one way and you slide in. Now this part right here can be real tricky. This is the worst part about this job. When you slide this in here, you've got to line it up. But what it's going to do is it's going to pull out to the outside because there's a big ass magnet on the outside. So it's a little tricky, but it can be done. Then put your screws in. Bam. Magic happens. Bam. <laughs> Recap. Buy air compressors, go with the 485s. When it comes to wiring, two gauge wire from your battery to your pack 80. Don't add power wire to your buy airs. Make your ground as short as you can. Pack 80, throw the little buy air relays. Use them for your headlights, your electric fans, not for these power hungry things. Do not use off brand compressors. Stay away from Vixen, airbagit.com, Air Max. Stay away from that stuff, it's junk, people. Sorry, it's junk. Engine driven compressors. If you want lots of air all the time, real quick. All of this stuff, you get what you pay for. If it's hooked up properly, it'll last forever. Carport Customs, like, subscribe, comment. We're trying to get to a thousand followers. Please y'all help us out. Share this stuff and uh, we'll see y'all in the next one.